here with Mick the Beard from Metal Gods TV. I'm with Mr. Brian Tatler. Hello, Mick the Beard. <laughs> <laughs> of Diamond Head, of course. Why do they call you Mick the Beard? I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, for viewers. Well, it's been, I think it's been a couple of years since I actually uh, interviewed yeah. you. Um, obviously, what's been going on since then? I mean, a lot of should think. What year was it? Uh, 2008, I think. Okay, so we've done the, the Watching Your Head album. Since then, uh, uh, we did some dates in 2008 and 2009. This year we did a tour with Europe uh, around the UK, and and this and then we've got all these dates now that we've booked. Um, we've been to Ireland, we've done Germany, Italy, and uh, we're off to Norway as well next weekend. So we're just trying to keep the band rolling forward, really. You know, we still write new material. It's just we haven't managed to do a new album uh, yet. So uh, that's that's sort of in the pipeline, and you, you know. At the moment, we just like to try and keep the band going. I mean, I suppose the recession has, has affected, uh, you know, everything and, and everybody. So we've felt that as well. You know, gigs finding it harder to to cough up the the readies to uh, to book bands and pay for flights and things like that. So uh, it, yeah, it's uh, it's still good. We're still enjoying playing live, and tonight was great. You know, I really enjoyed it. Good crowd, cool. really good. And are you, do you think there's a, a, a sort of big change going to be happening soon in the mu music world because all the they're slowly trying to shut down the uh, illegal downloading sites? Okay, well, I personally don't agree with downloading, so I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, I, I, I know pe people who, you know, people say uh, Spotify and, and all that. That's okay, but because uh, there's advertising involved and all that, and you can't actually. Um, you, you, I think you stream it, so you can listen to a new album, and then if you like it, you have to buy it, which is, I think is a good idea, and I think things should be more that way, you know, rather than just, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to buy any more albums, I'll just copy them, I'll, I'll, I'll download them illegally, and, and if you, you know, if, the music business has and will suffer if people stop buying CDs or, or downloading uh, uh, you know, legally, because as as you know, they they need the money to finance young bands who cost a lot of money, don't they? You know, once you reach, you know, from to get from A to B costs record companies probably millions of pounds. So uh, without that revenue, they're not going to be able to do it. And I think it will have, it will have the effect on record deals will be smaller. And the amount of time they, they give bands to uh, to become big or successful will be shorter and shorter. I think it's already getting pretty tight, but it'll be like one album before long. Where if, you, if your first album doesn't do well, you'll be out the door. Whereas years ago, they used to sign bands and they'd give them time to grow, wouldn't they? They'd have five or six albums before they might they might make the big album and crack it big. Uh, and it's got shorter and shorter. So I think record companies need that revenue from their uh, sales to, to keep the thing alive. But like you say, record companies are very impatient. I mean, but it's very rare, like you said, that the band's first album is the best album. Yes. Well, I, I, I mean, for the only one that springs to mind is Simple Minds. They, they made, I think, six or seven albums before they actually made an album that did really well. And everybody suddenly went, oh, Simple Minds. Not, you know, they've been going 10 years. I've made six albums. Well, we'd, I'd never heard of them, you know. And they suddenly, but that's, that's a label trusting in their instinct and, and working with the band and they're building their career and eventually yeah they did well that, but nowadays it's almost like you know you've got to do what Coldplay did uh, and their first album Parachutes was big hit great you know instantly big we've got a winner but it's a, like that's in a way set a precedent that it will give you one album you know if your first album bombs you could be out the door and, and that's incredibly tough, I think. It's all the pressure's on to, to write a, a brilliant first album and then a brilliant second album because, again, you, you know, like The Darkness, maybe. The Darkness first album did really well. Second album, not very well. Dropped. Yeah. That's your lot. So your, ca your career can be, you know, you're building and building towards this holy grail of a record deal. And I think uh, if you don't do it, you'll... Uh, 
you'll be out, you'll be in and out of the business in maybe a year, 18 months. And it's, it's a shame, but that's uh, the turnover that people expect now. And, uh, how do you think uh, the metal scene is now? I mean, since the, do you think it's the sort of best time since the 80s now? Yeah, well, it's always uh, been big, as far as I can remember, since, since the 80s. Uh, nobody seems to be able to kill it off, do they? You know, it bec it, and they always say it doesn't go out of fashion because it's never been in fashion, and I think that's a fair point. Um, so it's it's a loyal thing. Rock fans have always been loyal. You, you know, when you tend to like a band, you want every album and you want the collection. And I have to have, even if I don't like that album, I still want it. And and that doesn't happen in a lot of other forms of music, like pop music or whatever. They'll just buy that new album and they they'll go off the bands very quickly. But the, the metal fans seem to be really loyal, and they'll like a band for 25 years and stuff. So. Uh, it, it's amazing how it's grown, you know. I mean, I mean, I was at the first Donington, and there was probably thirty-five thousand people there, and then it grew and grew till it would eventually sell out, you know, and it'd be the hundred thousand people there, uh, and it's, you know, it's just, it's just grown and grown on all over the world as well. And, and, and bands like Metallica can just play anywhere, but seemingly, and they pull fifty thousand people. You know, they don't have to go to. Know, little clubs are oh, we're not very really big in you know they just be everywhere how does that happen you know yeah. incredible well, I mean you've played big venues in your time and, and I mean how does it how does it compare to sort of going to the smaller venue it, it's quite hard when you when you're on your way up and it's all rosy and you're getting bigger and you can see you know uh, that you you're making progress and you you, you the, there's more people coming in, you're selling more records, your, your album's going higher in the charts. That's, that's when it's all good, but when, when you're the other way around and you're on the way down and your album, you know, you're on a smaller label, you're doing smaller clubs, there's less people in, that's when bands very often fracture and they can't handle the, uh, the fact that the business is not all about the giant bands, it also can be a, a business, you know, like, like ours, where, where you can make, make a living from it, but you're not necessarily going to be driving around in a Rolls Royce, you, you might have to be in a transit van. So, you know, as long as you're prepared, as long as you've got your feet on the ground and you're humble enough to admit that, uh, you know, I'm not going to be a millionaire, then uh, you can, you know, and it, it's what you love doing as well, I think. I mean, not everybody in this band loves playing, and so we'll put up with all the crap of loading gear it up flights of stairs and you know driving all night because we want to play in a band really you know we wouldn't do it for nothing but we also enjoy playing to the point where we put up with the the, the crap <laughs> yeah i mean some guys haven't handled it though i mean some, some no. went into drugs and you know, oh, i no. suppose you've lost a few you're fucked when you do that way. yeah uh, yeah i suppose uh, I haven't got any particularly rock and roll stories. A friend died of uh, uh, diabetes. Well, that's, that's just life, isn't it? There, it, it's not like it's his own fault of injecting or something. There's no getting drunk or anything. I mean, you know, I'd met, I met Bon Scott, and then Bon Scott died about a month after I'd met him. But so that was a bit, bit of a shock to me, you know, at the age of 20 or whatever it was. Uh, and, and, and that's a bit of a, a wake-up call, but I've never been a drinker really, and I've never really dabbled in all the hard drugs, so I always figured, where's that going to lead, you know, where's, where's that going, so I, I wouldn't get into that sort of stuff. I'd rather, you know, be a musician, I don't see the two, why, the, why should they equate, you know, being a musician, getting completely out your face, getting high on drugs, why are they, why are they linked, you know. I, I, uh, the drummer out of uh, Three Colours Red uh, was drank himself to death. I, I know he, Keith Baxter. But that's a shame. And, uh, and as somebody pointed out, there's so much alcohol freely available to bands. You know, every time you go into the dressing room, it's full of beer, yeah. even whiskey sometimes, vodka. You know, so you're almost encouraged to drink. Like, sometimes we have to ask for water. Can we have some water, please? You know, cause, oh, we've got, we've got some lager. You know, it's 24 cans of lager. But that's what you wanted, and, they, and we have to go now. We'll, we'll have some water first, please. You know, we'll maybe have, <laughs> have, a, have a drink afterwards. But <laughs> so you know, I guess we could, wee, no point just doing that, is there? I couldn't play if I was drunk. A lot of people do though, don't they? They go on stage drunk. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's their. That's what if that's what they want to do. It wouldn't help me. I've tried it, and 
I can't play when I'm drunk or stoned or anything. I just have to be completely focused. I have to warm up. I have to have, have a little bit of time, if possible, to get ready for the gig. You know, I mean, tonight was a bit of a rush, but um, that's that's the thing of going on at five o'clock in the afternoon. You know, it's quite quite, a, quite early, but. Um, now I couldn't drink, or I'd be crap if I, if I was. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be inspired. No. I wouldn't be like Jimi Hendrix. Or <laughs> a, <laughs> I'd just be bloody hell, dropping some clams tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and finally, what's on the horizon for Diamond Head, and what can you tell the fans out there to look forward to? Just, just hopefully, you know, we'll still be around. Keep checking out the website, and we'll we'll do what we can do. You know, we'll keep the band going as long as possible. We. You know, we get gigs coming in and uh, we're working on new material. Uh, we recorded last night's show to to uh, possibly do as a, a live DVD or live video or something. Um, so, you know, we're always working on a few ideas. We still want to get the last two albums released in America because uh, they, they only came out in, in Europe on, on our label. Pardon me. Uh, but uh, we, we're just kind of keep trying to keep pushing it, really, trying to see see what we can see how far we can take it great stuff remember people catch diamond dead wherever you can <laughs> absolutely brilliant thanks Brian <laughs> thank you cheers